everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Bullish or Bearish. I'm Angela Chu from Success Options Group, and I'm here again with my brother, Tony. And we're going to go over another great topic that's going to really, like, blow your mind. Yeah. So like Angela said, we're, we're talking about one of those things that you're hearing in, like, social media, in the news, everything. Everything's about inflation, right? And one of the things that, like, people don't realize or... I guess nobody's sure exactly what's happening. So, I mean, recently Joe Biden went on the news and he said that we had 0% inflation in July, right? And he didn't quite mean 0%, but what he was saying is that the rate of increase in the inflation didn't go up. It wasn't like skyrocketing like it was in the prior months. And that's kind of this whole idea of they've kind of, they've got this handled, right? That, that's what they're trying to say. It's like, they've got inflation handled and it's, it's going to be, it's on the way down and they, they got the good plans in place. Okay. So let's go back to that whole Joe Biden thing and the 0%. When he said there was 0%, he just meant that from June to July, it went from 9.1 to 8.5. So it, it didn't increase from 9.1 in June. So that's why it was 0%. But actually, inflation was still 8.5. You know what I mean? It wasn't actually 0 like, percent inflation year over year. He's just saying the change from the last month was 0%, which is why we, like people were like, talking all about why that was just like mathematical, like, like trickery, you know, mir smoke and mirrors type of thing. But the fact that it went down for one month doesn't necessarily mean that it's peaked. Because if you think about the stock market, if the stock market goes up a little bit and then comes back down, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to continue going down. We won't know if it actually going down or just, you know, pausing for a minute and then going back up or maybe just staying plateaued. We won't know that until we see a few more months out. So I admit that that's a good saying is that one point does not make a trend. Um, but I think where they're coming at is like, if you look at all of some of these other factors, right? So let's, let's take, for example, the job market, right? We're at record low unemployment. It was like at three and a half percent. And that means that people are working and they're making more money, right? They're, they're like salaries and wages are rising and it, this is the way that people are able to account for that inflation. Okay, so one of the big issues with this whole, okay, inflation like started flattening is they also started doing a lot of things to try to keep inflation from continuing going up. Because I mean, the fact that, you know, they've started cutting into like the petroleum reserves in order to make sure that gas prices don't continue increasing, you know, that's a type of manipulation of the inflation as well, because that's part of you know what they're counting as like how much inflation we're going up. Plus, if you look at it, if you take out like the food versus like all the other stuff, the food inflation for food, like you're still continuing to pay more. That hasn't actually flattened. It's still continuing to go up. And the problem with the like the other things, like the retail stuff, you know, you're talking about all your goods and services. Now, is it because we have a decrease in a lack of like a desire to spend? So people aren't spending money. And is that why there's like less inflation? Just because people aren't spending money and there's just more goods out there. But I think that that's where the other part of this comes in. Like the commodity prices have come down, right? If you just go to the gas pumps, it is significantly cheaper. It's like an, at least like depending on where you live, of course, but uh, it's, it's dollar, dollar something, right? Cheaper than it was just a couple months ago, right? During Memorial Day weekend, right? So now commodity prices are coming down and it's not only just oil, right? It's it's all commodities, lumber, oil, uh, copper, everything has been coming down. So in some sense, what they're taking, you know, what people have been taking victory is like, yeah, we, we're, we're on the way down. We, we're like bringing this, you know, we don't have as much of this. Um, a lot of it was being bl blamed on supply chain before, right? So it's like, okay, well now, you know, that, that's all pandemic supply chain kind of exacerbated all this kind of stuff. So now we got this more handled. 
okay, so do we actually have it handled or is, are we trying to like kind of trick ourselves? Because like when I was going back at the oil thing, usually when the oil prices go down, you know, that means that's because we've had like an increase in production or because, you know, we've re-obtained some like supply chain, you know, or like we've re like acquired like our like whatever supply pathway that we had from before because part of the reason that the oil prices went up is because where we usually got oil you know like our normal supply chain got like messed up but the fact is is that the reason the prices went down is not because we got our supply chain back or because we produced more oil it's because we are cutting in to the reserve that we've been collecting you know our strategic reserves that we've been collecting for a really long time and now he's used like what i forgot the last thing i read about it was like he's used a quarter of it and a quarter of the entire reserve that has been collected over the last like what 50 100 years you know so this is where i have a little bit of special knowledge it's like that stuff he released from the reserve doesn't really help us all that much that's not the quite the type of crude oil that we use a, a lot of that it's very it is it, not really going to make that much of a benefit to our own supply chain in the refining industry but anyways that, that's just a little tidbit um i guess the the other last major leg that i know of that they're really getting at is that the central bank or the federal reserve is actually doing stuff now they're raising that interest rate people have seen that mortgage rate go from three point something now it's like five point three five point it's somewhere in the fives right and that means they're raising interest rates. So they're, and th they've had recent communication where there's no mention. They're, they're, they're not going to be lowering or they're not going to stop raising it because they know they need to get this inflation down, right? And they need to get this down. So they're, they're going to keep um, raising rates. And what that does is it reigns in like the free money spending that people were doing, right? And, you know, it, it reduces what people, can spend so if you don't spend money you don't have inflation you don't have monetary velocity well okay you talk about that but we still have what what was it like 1.5 trillion more like federal spending now than it was before covid so you know that also has to be addressed as well because not only is like federal spending have to like kind of figure out a way to not keep increasing like you can't just keep printing more money to try to like help with this but the other thing is that you talk about like people spending less, it depends on why they're spending less. Because if people are spending less because they're afraid and they wanna save their money, that caused the economy to stagnate. And that's not actually very good for our economy either. Because then, you know, your retail places start getting overstocked. And then the only way they can like get rid of inventory is to put things on, you know, discount to like massive sales. So yes, you're talking about, oh, great, everything's on sale, but that's not necessarily a good thing because then that also affects the, you know, income and earnings of the actual company as well. Yeah, I, I mean, so this is why this whole topic is very tricky, right? And I, I said it before, one point does not make a trend. My own personal feelings, right? Um, this inflation, there are a lot of, there are, are a lot of different, um, you know different variables that go into this whole calculation right so even though cpi went down and like the producer price in index went down too right it, it's some it, it's a, there's a lot of moving parts I, I don't know andrew you have any final thoughts here that is just what you know that's what most of our videos are about and that's also why we you know give classes do workshops it's because there are very few things that are just cut and dry black and white yes or no there's usually a lot of variables that you have to kind of look into and figure out, well, what is the right answer for you? Like, what is the right, the things that apply for your life and what you need to know in order to handle the situations that you want to deal with? And that's why we say, you know, hey, you know, come talk to us, have set up a meeting and we can talk to things like if you're interested in things like financials or like trying to learn more. Yeah, so make sure you hit the like, hit the subscribe, leave some comments below. What are your thoughts on like, you know, is inflation over or not? Right. And make sure you stay tuned for the next episode. See you next time.